Hey folks, welcome back to this post-mortem wrap-up of our multiplayer Let's Play of Stellaris. And I'm Perry. And I'm Keb. And yeah, this and game has pretty much li lived out its life, really. I mean, yeah, that's why, uh, that's why we're pretty much pulling the plug on it, I think. Well, I mean, you, you will have noticed we've done that already with the lack of updates lately, but... Yeah. Um, well, Keb, since you were the one most aggrieved, you know, you've been most off-put by this soonest you want to start off yeah your, it's your pretty, thoughts yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well one of the thing we've been talking about before we actually uh, started recording here too it's the pretty much of the deal of using high planes in a spiral arm galaxy you can get so screwed if you're stuck between two empires which i was so yeah that was rather and annoying you, yeah you had an empire on one side empire on the other side and then the dreadnought sitting on a third so it's mm -hmm. I just didn't have, just did not have the chance to expand until you gave me access to the other arm, and that kind of helped. Yeah. Because otherwise, you can still see that I would have had, I would have had less than half the territory I currently do, if I hadn't expanded that way. So yeah. Like I mean, the game probably needs. Would I think the game may benefit if there was a way to control in the spiral galaxy the hyperlane connections between arms? Yeah, at least the frequency of them, because they should be far more frequent there. To prevent that lock. Yeah, because let's look at one real quick. So let's file, follow one arm inward. So this arm starts here. It's got one. Uh, let's see. One, two, three. So four. So the arm, my capital, is in your capital, is in also. Only four connections the entire from between that and the next inner arm. One. Oh, And it looks like between us and the next outermost arm, I only count three. So yeah, no. Hyper hyperlane hyperdrive is what I'm seeing in a separate game that I've been doing. This is superb in elliptical galaxies. But here you can get gimped, beaten badly, I don't know. Whatever, whatever term suits your, your vocabulary. And that's one reason why I like hyper... hyper uh, yeah, hyper... Wormholes! There we go, words! <laughs> I mean, for me, this is something that I run into and why I haven't, like, encouraged Kev to try to finish this one up. The, the later game... I mean, the early part of the game is just amazing for me. I love it. It's I think it's probably one of the best expressions of a 4X space game that I've seen to date. Particularly with the anomalies and the exploration and, and everything like that. The variety of planets and the systems and the events and the stories that go with a lot of them and so on. That entire part, that entire sub-game, that entire source of amazement and wonder vanishes from the game. It's not that there, it changes into some other expression or that it comes about some other way or they take those same tool set and then you have other ways of applying it. It just completely stops. The events disappear, which is... Uh, the events is... Okay, the anomalies in the exploration, I can you can make an argument that they should disappear. Um, I've talked to Kevin about some other ideas I have. I probably should post those on the forum, but I won't bother with you here. <laughs> but... The inexcusable one is the events go away. And I, I don't understand a company that's produced EU4 and Hearts of Iron 4 and Crusader Kings 2 and all those other games that are rich with randomized events. I mean, where are the planetary disputes? Where is the governor screw up? Where is the government corruption? Where is... This is a freaking... I currently control a quarter of a galaxy. I have... Oh, what is it, hundreds, hundreds some planets at this point? And this is going to border into rant mode, so grab some popcorn for it. <laughs> I have 62 planets ruled by this empire. And there there are no dramas. There are no refugee crises. There are no disasters on planets. There are no natural I, disasters. There are no anything. I think the point, though, that the, or the design point behind that is that by the time you get to that point, the drama of the game, which is basically what you're looking for, is supposed to be the interaction between the various empires. And that's supposed to spawn things. And there are a handful of, of events that are based on the uh, 
Uh, we are, galaxy we have now. You I mean if you have uh, observation outposts on certain settings, you can get events from those. There are a handful of events that triggered later, after colonization. But yeah, yeah at this point, the most of the interaction should be between nations, right? Well, so. But the same argument can be made in their other products, and they still put in the random flavor events. Yeah, but in those cases, they're, they're tied to the Empire. Here, the Empires are random, so no. they can't really tie them to tags the way they can. No, in, no, no, in no. Games. If you look at the actual games, they have province level, like CK2. You have family events, city events, holding events, province events, county events, etc. EU4 has random events that occur on the province level and on a regional level. They've got the technology, it's in the code. Hmm. And this is the same engine. Here, they just chose not to do it. Yeah, but they have to tie it down to the planet, wouldn't they? Because they couldn't tie it down to the sector, given that the sectors have varied sizes. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> if they but had again, sector events, imagine the problem between having one that scales for a 50-planet sector and one that for a one-planet sector. But they they have different level events, and you can still scale them. Mm, fair and enough. And so it's... And for heaven's sakes, if they had, say, unrest events that affect entire sectors... Well, that would be a great motivation for players to not have one sector covering 5,000 planets. <laughs> well, technically, it's, it's like, supposed, supposed to be that all, already, but I mean, no, at, but least, it's like, at least it used to be, because then the sector would yeah. try to seek independence all at once. Yeah. I can understand that certain mechanics have to change as your empire grows and evolve, but the design decision here to cut them out of the game as opposed to... F have them fill new new supportive lesser roles shine shines brightly because you can you can sit here late and late in the game like in a solar player game and largely walk away for five or ten minutes and come back and really nothing has happened mm -hmm. there might be a war or two here or something like that but at no point should there be a, a, some, me sitting here playing the game unpaused fast to speed reading the news <laughs> <laughs> because I'm waiting for something to happen. I'm waiting four and a half game years for a simple tech. Or I think there's no there's nothing to engage the player. And that's the fundamental role that's missing here. And it's really beginning to to sour Stellaris. It starts off great, wonderful. I love the game. And it gets about a hundred years in to why am I wasting my time? Well, to be fair, they're also trying to address that though. I mean they are aware yeah. of it. So. Oh, I know that, and, and and that's why I'm being patient with them and everything else like that. And, but the the thing that's the, the caveat, the one other flip on this, they've been making these games for seventeen 20 to twenty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they we know have... we know that right. the cross pollination of their games is a bit slow. <laughs> We've seen that so many times before, and every single time they release a new copy of any of their titles. They shed away a lot of the stuff they'd already learned in the same franchise because they don't have time to implement it or because they want to use it in DLCs later, I assume. Uh, and the same thing is true for all the small little quality of life things that they just can't improve or can't bring along immediately. Yeah, I mean, but uh, I, I yeah. understand that they got budget limitations and staffing limitations and stuff, but writing random events shouldn't be that hard. Modders do it in their spare time. It's like, here... This is my mod pack. Here's 50 new events. Well, it still so requires a, a scripter, so... <laughs> it still requires manpower. Maybe not yeah, as much, but yeah. I, as you point out, it's probably one of the lesser intensive ones for them, I suppose. I, no. Because there should, it should, usually isn't too much code involved, or graphics. At least it, it needn't be. They could always reuse graphics and... Well, yeah, but they yeah. can they can re. I mean, this is the same engine that powers CK2 and EU4. Hmm. So the scripting code is a known entity. There are there are wikis dedicated to the whole thing. For heaven's sakes, <laughs> there are entire tutorials elsewhere on YouTube showing you how to write events and script events and everything else like that. So it's just yeah, no, and I I, I understand how games are built. I mean, even, I've been in and out of it as a fan and a volunteer and whatever for a long time, but it's just I don't know. It's it's really, it just feels like whatever was going on creating Stellaris, and this has been, I think this game was an excellent example of it for me. Uh, Crunchy Munch ended up being a really great example of that too for me. There are so many features they put in but didn't finish. 
Let's put an exploration. It goes half the game. Okay, doesn't do anything. Vanishes. Let's put an events. Okay, they're, they're a big part of your empire for half the game. Then they disappear. Let's put in all these different ways you can win the game, but then not use them as actual victory conditions. Just go conquer the galaxy. <laughs> it's, there's no, it's just, yeah, it's just like... Let's create federations. They work wonderful. Oh, wait, sorry. They're absolutely immortal once they're created, so you can't do anything about them. It's just... Mm. So, anyways... Yeah, but it's, it's going to get better. I'm sure it will. Oh, I'm very much looking forward to what they're going to do with federations, because I know that they've been talking a lot, lot about it, but it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, the new um, revamped uh, factions are certainly a step in the right direction in terms of internal policies. And that's actually kind of engaging because there you can set, you need to manage your empire in order to placate certain groups of the population. And I'd imagine that something like that transplanted, transplanted to the federation level would have been interesting. So that when you're a federation leader you have to placate the various member or they might actually leave. If you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. It's probably more, dif more difficult to do sim simply because of the granularity of it. <laughs> only like two or three federation partners. But yeah, I don't but know. We keep getting... We keep having people working for Paradox, names I will withhold, telling us <laughs> of how they are genius AI coders and that, they're, that their skills are so much beyond normal mortals that, that we... So yeah, I, I would just like to see some of that. <laughs> and I don't want to say that I, I'm negative on the game overall. This is just one of those really weird things where I, I start game after game after game and play and play them and love them and then about 75 100 game years in it starts mellowing out and about 100 you know like this one we were 139 years in and it's like meh yeah well to be honest for me the meh was simply because I got trapped in and then yeah for that matter yeah. I, that what that's what caused the meh for me in this game that and watching the tribes of Marge let's go completely <laughs> obnoxiously large on the outside and uh, uh. And then now we're up, and now we're up against an, a, an awakened empire that we will stand no chance against. Yeah, that too. Uh, so yeah, fun times. Anyways, <laughs> I, I'm like kind of sad. That, yeah, I'm kind of sad that I didn't get to go deeper into the spiritualist thing on this playthrough, though. Mm. I would have liked to point, um, poke into the shroud and see what's there. But hey, doom, death, possibly. There are always mean, future playthroughs. Yeah, I've heard rumors of a certain dark deal you can do there. That has a well, interesting result. I don't think it's active in multiplayer, though. Okay. Simply because of what it does, but yeah. <laughs> well, sell uh, your souls. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But well, I'm... that's the uh, cl close the loop or not event chain that goes along those lines. Ah, yeah. Oh, well. But... But anyways, mm. I think I I fin I think I, I finished my rant at this point. <laughs> I like the race. I do like fanatic spiritualist pacifist or fanatic spir pacifist spiritualists. No, I can't get into war. I would never get into a war. I probably should have joined a federation. Uh, I might do that in like a solo single player game. But the unity bonuses, the core world bonus, core system bonuses are absurd. Yeah, you do get quite a lot of unity by going that route, so that's the, oh, yeah. the trade-off, of course. You can't go any, on any aggressive expansion, and if you're trapped by other empires, you're kind of screwed. So you had you had, a, you, you had that going for you. You had at least some room to expand initially. Yeah, no, I got an absurd, absurdly good starting position for what I had, what I had chosen. Mm -hmm. But anyways. Yep. I think we've burned enough bridges at this point. <laughs> yeah, basically we're going to wrap this game up here. I don't know if, we, if we're going to return to Stellaris at some point. We'll see. Probably. Well, we might wait for the the, the Capic or Cape. I don't want to pronounce it. Capic. At, at the very least. I mean, we'll see. The 1.8 patch. Need Maybe. something new and engaging, really. And we that's probably good, have our, we still probably still have our sibling single player game, game games, both of us. Oh, yeah. we'll probably we'll probably do a couple. Well, I feel like doing a couple of those. So after mm. Kid beats me once, I'll let him beat me again. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. I'm done. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and hope, hopefully Thanks, you'll folks. have enjoyed the campaign with us. Yep. And if you have any feedback for us, leave it in the comment section. Bye. Bye.